I'm Dave O. Oh, I'm a medical oncologist, and I work uh, exclusively on immunotherapy. Uh, many of my patients are prostate cancer patients, so um, I very much enjoy talking to prostate cancer patients about immunotherapy. Um, I think my goal with this talk is to try to keep it high level, but um, to give you some tools to understand, you know, uh, where did immunotherapy come from? How does it work? And what's going on right now? Um, so, and, you know, I'll be hanging out after this. So happy to take any questions now or later. Um, just in the interest of transparency, my only relevant disclosure is that um, I have received funding from Merck to do clinical trials of one of the immunotherapies that we'll be talking about, which is called pembrolizumab or Keytruda. Um, so a basic definition. So what is immune th immunotherapy? Um, this is actually kind of a broad term. So all that immunotherapy is, is an approach where instead of trying to kill the tumor directly with a drug, we're trying to use your immune system and recruit that immune system in your body to fight the cancer. Um, now, this has been a long time coming, and um, this is actually a chronological timeline. And the only thing I want to communicate with this is that it's really taken more than a century of both basic understanding of what the immune system is and how it works, and a lot of trial and error as far as developing therapies that led to some of the treatments that I'll be talking about, which are Cepulis-LT or Provenge and PD-1 inhibitors or anti-PD-1. So... Um, you know, I felt I, I need to give you some basic background. Uh, this will not be, a, you know, a very rigorous course in immunology, but um, I think to understand how, you know, these therapies try to recruit your immune system, it's helpful to have some vocabulary. So your immune system actually is an organ, just like your heart, your lungs, or your kidneys. Um, it's very special in that it's a distributed organ. It's not like one solid mass. It's actually these cells that are floating around in your bloodstream. And they do a really good job of patrolling your body for infection, right? And that's the reason that they were developed evolutionarily. Um, I think there are two cells in particular that are relevant to talk about with immunotherapy. There are many more that are being targeted. So one is called a T cell. Uh, T cell is a very smart cell that basically is able to latch on to, let's say, a cancer cell. And if it recognizes the thing it's supposed to recognize, it turns on and kills the cancer. Um, but it doesn't do that by itself. Uh, it has to interact with another partner. Uh, in this case, I'm highlighting something called a dendritic cell. And a dendritic cell is um, basically kind of like a conductor. Um, this is uh, kind of leading the orchestra, but it tells the T cell, okay, you need to turn on and uh, it'll help that T cell turn on in response to the right, what's called an antigen or a target. So how do these interact and how does this uh, pertain to cancer? So um, it turns out that there is this very delicate dance that occurs, not just between T cells and dendritic cells, but your tumors, um, to allow your immune system to mobilize, um, to recognize tumor antigens. And so, um, this is, you know, called the cancer immunity cycle. I, I won't go into the details, except that there's a very nice cycle here where if you have tumors down here, when they die, they release these targets called antigens. The antigens are actually eaten up by the conductors, the dendritic cells, which then chew those up and it kind of pushes those out to the T cells. So it bumps into those T cells. And if they find the right T cell, it turns on. Those T cells, you know, are happy. They get activated. They come back to the tumor and they start killing the tumor. Now that's how it's supposed to work, I guess. But, the, you know, cancer has found many ways to get around this. And so basically, um, you know, the treatments I'll be talking about, um, they've basically tried to enhance different parts of this cycle, right? So as far as the presentation of targets or antigens and turning on the T cells, that is what Provenge or Cepulis LT is doing. As far as the actual killing of a cancer cell by T cells, cancer cells, um, as I'll tell you, have found different ways to turn off those T cells and, you know, PD-1 blockade or anti-PD-1 uh, is a drug that we've developed to reverse that process. So first, um, Provenge or Cepulis LT, um, kind of a mouthful. Um, this is actually a, a vaccine. Um, you know, the technical term uh, is it's called an autologous cellular immunotherapy. So what that means in layman's terms is that this is a therapy that is made from a patient's own immune cells. So we take your cells, um, we uh, collect them uh, from your body in a process called leukapheresis, which is done at a blood bank. 
And then we actually take the dendritic cells and um, we allow them to basically activate your T cells in response to a particular antigen called prostatic acid phosphatase or PAP. So we're trying to generate a vaccine using your own cells that will turn on your T cells. And this gets infused back into your body in three separate infusions. And it does turn on your immune system. So we and many others participated in these studies, but it turns on your B cells, uh, your T cells, as well as what are called B cells that make antibodies. And when that happens, those folks tend to do better. Um, so this is a, a complicated process, but you know, um, in several trials that were done, um, you know, Provenge uh, prolonged how long men lived versus a placebo. And this was FDA approved in 2010. Um, it, it, in some ways, this treatment was way ahead of its time because I think now we're working on next generation cellular therapies, but this was a really visionary kind of thing. Generally, our practice is that we give Provenge um, earlier in CRPC um, to men who are generally asymptomatic. Um, it's pretty well tolerated, I think, because these uh, immune cells are activated when they get it infused into your bloodstream they can cause flu-like symptoms, which is actually not because of a virus, it's just because we're actually turning on your immune system. So the other um, approved therapy for some prostate cancer patients I wanted to tell you about, um, you know, I, I've been calling this anti-PD-1 or PD-1 blockade. Um, these are also known as immune checkpoint inhibitors. So I have to give you a little more information about, okay, so what is an immune checkpoint? Uh, an immune checkpoint, is basically something that's sticking out on your T cells. And it was not there to give us you know, a target for therapy. Uh, originally, these were developed evolutionarily because we got to control your T cells, right? So these T cells got to kill off infection, but they can't go haywire and attack your own body. So immune checkpoints were evolved um, to basically toggle the on off switch for your T cells, right? So they're on when they need to be on, but we can turn them off with this thing that's sticking out on the T cell to turn it off when it's necessary. So um, turns out there's a very particular immune checkpoint on T cells called PD-1. And so when T cells are trying to bump into a cancer cell and kill them, as I outlined before, when everything is working well, turns out, as I said, that tumors have found ways to turn off the T cells. And so what this is showing is the T cell talking to a cancer cell, the T cell is PD-1, uh, the tumor cell actually and other cells in the tumor upregulate this uh, ligand called PDL1. It sticks to the PD1, puts that T cell to sleep, can't kill the tumor. So um, I think um, some scientists I think had the, the really great idea of can we take an antibody, just block PD1 from getting you know, turned on? And that is what is called PD1 blockade or anti PD1. So in a way, it kind of takes the brakes off your T cells. And once we do that, the T cells hopefully should know what to do and kill the tumor. Now, um, I think in earlier talks, um, you know, folks talked about these specific genetic scenarios in prostate cancer. So, um, you know, um, a fraction of um, men um, have what's called mismatch repair deficiency or microsatellite instability uh, or MSI. And I apologize for all the terminology, but basically um, these are terms you're gonna run across. So these tumors have problems fixing their own DNA and I think the idea is that that causes there to be genetic changes in the tumor and your immune system is smart enough. It can see those changes. So it turns out that those particular men uh, whose tumors have this, this uh, characteristic, they're um, highly likely to respond to PD-1 blockade. And those are the men for which um, anti-PD-1 or pembrolizumab or Keytruda is approved by the FDA. So if you have MSI or defective mismatch repair, also, if you have a high mutational burden, which means there are a lot of genetic changes in your tumor, I won't go into that as much. Uh, those are the men uh, for whom we're considering pembrolizumab or Keytruda. There's been a lot of work to combine pembrolizumab with other agents. Um, and I think that has been uh, less fruitful, but um, still uh, a work in progress. Um, so I would be remiss to say that, um, you know, for many men who receive a PD-1 blockade, they do fine. However, um, because we're tweaking the immune system, sometimes these T cells can attack your own body. And so these are uh, called immune-related adverse events or IRAEs. But this is um, the other side of what happens to those T cells. Um, it's really the minority of patients who have this, um, you know, between 10 and 25%. Um, most commonly, uh, you know, this picture is meant to depict that 
The T cells can attack any organ in your body, actually. Most commonly, it'll cause a skin rash, so derm dermatitis. It could attack your thyroid as well, but there are many other things that could happen. Unfortunately, we cannot currently predict before we start the treatment who's going to have this problem. Um, so this is definitely an area of ongoing work. So my last slide, um, I've been mostly talking about approved therapies because I think that's what's, what's most relevant to you guys for immunotherapy. There's a lot of activity here. And, um, you know, so uh, I'm not going to really touch upon that except this. So there is another type of drug immunotherapy that's being developed called a bispecific T cell engager. Again, a mouthful. You can call it a bite. You can call it a bispecific. There is, um, these are, are basically working as glue or Velcro. So they stick to something on your tumor and then they stick to your T cell. And so when you stick them together, as in this cartoon, the idea is the T cell will just automatically start killing the tumor. There is one particular drug um, that has been tested called AMG 509, uh, also called Zalurinamig. Um, yeah, a lot, quite a mouthful there as well. So I think that we need to work on better names. Uh, this is from a company called Amgen, and there was a recent um, release of some very promising data so this trial, as Eric said, um, was tested in CRPC patients. Uh, many of these men had had prior hormonal therapies, chemotherapy. I think some had had Plavicto. Um, the, the top line result is that almost half of these patients had a deep uh, response in their PSA. And if they had tumors we could measure with a ruler, many of them also had shrinkage. Um, and so far with follow-up, I think that is lasting. There were side effects. Um, the side effects are kind of like Provenge, but more intense, called cytokine release syndrome. And for reasons we don't understand, the muscle also, you can have issues, so like muscle aches or even weakness. The other feature, um, having treated a number of these patients, is that this drug is given as an infusion every one to two weeks, and there are no breaks. So it's an ongoing treatment. We don't know if we can safely stop it without losing the effect. But um, for my patients, I think it is a quality of life issue. Uh, but this is one of the more promising immunotherapies where testing is ongoing. So obviously, um, a lot of other things to touch on. So hopefully, you got some sense of the immune system and how we're tweaking it um, to help um, you know, men with prostate cancer. But there are multiple approved immunotherapies. Uh, we've been working on this for a long time. And when it happens, when patients respond, it can last. Um, Right now, I think some of the approved uh, treatments are either tailored to you, uh, specific patients like Provenge, or it's for select patients, such as pembrolizumab for those specific MSI patients. But we're trying to broaden that. So we're looking at novel approaches um, that could benefit a broader um, group of folks. And there can be side effects, and that can affect quality of life. Thank you. <laughs>